Good afternoon, Kiran. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here today. Um, maybe to kick off this conversation, uh, can you give a brief introduction and uh, who is Kiran Falangan and uh, what uh, HubSpot is all about? Yeah, so uh, my name is Kieran Flanagan. I'm the marketing director for HubSpot um, in Europe, international. So I work out of our Dublin office. Our Dublin office we um, was opened really this time last year um, to service the whole of international, and that's really everything outside of US and Canada. Um, so we were 12 people then. We're about 70 people now. Um, we're probably looking to double out again this year. Um, and HubSpot are a uh, Boston-based company. We were created in 2006. Um, we're a company of about 700 employees now, over well over 10,000 customers. And really, what HubSpot do is we have a marketing platform that allows companies to create an inbound funnel for their business, and that's from that's really around how do they attract you know ideal customers into their funnel, their website, how do they use personalization and different tools to move those people through their funnel into um, having successful customers, which you know all, all businesses um, are successful because they actually create happy, successful customers who love the brand. And that's what our marketing platform helps do. Okay. Sounds interesting. I guess that uh, quite a lot of marketeers here know HubSpot just because of the great content you provide. Um, but Kiran, you, you, let's uh, touch at uh, your session. You're going to speak at the B2B about how to create a love story between marketing and sales. And actually, when I read this title, I was actually quite triggered. Is it possible to create a love story between marketing and sales? Um, yes. So I think it's possible to create a better version than most companies have. So I think if you think of the typical company and where the marketing and sales um, is really broken is that marketing, marketers typically think that you know, salespeople don't do a great job at working their leads, at following up with their leads. You know, the marketers feel that they give them good quality leads and they don't understand why sales complain. I think if you look at it from the other side, most sales teams think that you know, marketers aren't giving the right type of leads. They don't really understand who their customers are and they're really just firing any old leads you know, over the fence. They don't really care about the quality, they just care about the numbers. And I think what the right companies are doing is how do they kind of create processes, create different metrics, create things within the company that align marketing and sales around the same type of goals. So you don't have a marketing team that's measured on the amount of leads that they generate and the sales team measured on the amount of leads that they actually close in the customers because those two goals don't actually align with each other. You know, I'm a marketer, I can easily generate a thousand leads of questionable quality and then just tell the sales guy, well I hit my number, I don't really mind that you didn't manage to close any of these. So it's how do we create processes, metrics and start actually aligning our marketing and sales team around the same type of goals, which are the goals of the company, which you know is to be successful is to I mean to make sure we have as, as many happy customers as possible. Yeah, but uh, but you know let, let's let's take it uh, uh, on on uh, from theory to uh, practical. Um, your company I know because uh, some of our audience uh, knows uh, Mike Volpe as well. He spoke at our previous event, and he exposed yeah. to us the enormous amount of leads that you guys are generating. Um, can you describe how? to us, uh, how the sales and marketing uh, at HubSpot, uh, how the love story there looks like? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things that HubSpot do well in terms of aligning a marketing and sales team. So, you know, if, you, if Mike probably talked a lot, of, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but a big part of what we do is we have buyer personas. So, you know, we create fictional representations of our dream customers so we know exactly who we're creating this content for, who we're trying to attract into our sites. So a lot of the times people think that HubSpot create a huge amount of content but they don't know that we're creating that content from multiple buyer personas because we're trying to attract different people to our site. Yep. Um, and a big part of that process is actually marketing and sales, working on who that representation is of their ideal customer. So you know, marketing are picking the right tools, the right content, the right things to actually attract the right type of buyer personas into our site. The other 
you know, really good thing that Hotspot do is they actually align the marketing sales teams around the same type of goals. So the way that works is marketers in Hotspot are held accountable to a revenue number. Um, so we have four or five, we have five different lead types. Yep. Each lead type we can have a dollar value associated with it because we know the lead type and we know the close rate of each of those lead types and we can put a dollar value against um, each of those lead types. So in any given month I know if my, sale, my marketing team are attracting the right type of leads, leads at the right type of value to actually generate enough of a pipeline for the sales team to um, hit their number in the following months. So that's, I'm just going to move now because the kitchen's getting kind of busy. So I'm sorry about this. Um, so that's kind of one of the ways that, um, you know, Hotspot really um, align their marketing and sales team around the same type of goals. So you mentioned, just to um, to come back to you, what you mentioned, so you said, okay, uh, first of all, we have buyer personas that we all agreed upon, including uh, sales and marketing. Uh, so who are we actually targeting? Then uh, we are aligned regarding revenue. So actually, uh, we are aligned around what type of leads do they get from us and how many of those leads. Uh, and, and basically, you track those leads development up to the revenue generation part. Yeah, so, yeah. so we, you know, in the same way, the sales team have a service level agreement in terms of how much revenue they need to generate each and every month to hit their quota. Marketing have a leads quota each and every month in terms of how many, not in terms of how many leads, but the leads that will um, attribute enough revenue for the sales guy to hit their pipeline. So, you know, if I know my demo trial contact sales and we have something called an inbound marketing assessment, yeah. you know, I know each of those dollar values. Yeah. So I know and if I have a sales team that are roughly have a certain pipeline, I know over a given month how much of those leads I need to generate so the sales person has enough leads that for the following month they can actually hit their target. Yep. So in that way marketing are held accountable to the sales target. Um, and what that does is it causes a lot of shifts within a company. It causes you know, marketing and sales to be a lot more focused on what each other are doing. I think even just putting that focus on each other's you know, sales team questioning what are the marketing tactics that are going to help the sales team get enough leads for them to actually generate their pipeline and marketers trying to work with the sales teams so they can actually get better close rates because if we get better close rates the dollar value of our leads go up. Um, so again it's really putting responsibilities on the marketers who are actually focusing on what sales teams are doing and vice versa. The sales team are then going to be more interested in what type of tactics the marketers are running to get the right type of leads for them. Yeah. And and um, what what does it create in your company? I mean, what does it create to the what does it do to the perception of marketing in the organization? So I I think that the, the the big shift is it really gives marketing um, a seat at the revenue table. So if you think that seat at the revenue table is usually the VP of sales, the CFO, the CEO, uh, and the marketers are never really involved in those conversations because they usually have fluffy metrics. Yeah, you know metrics that brand awareness traffic, all of these things that are good indicators of success of a company. If we have these things, if they're growing, we know that the company has more chance of being successful. Yeah. But they're actually not going to get you that seat. Talk. You can't really have a conversation with a VP of sales when he's talking about revenue targets and you're talking yeah. about brand awareness and traffic. Yeah, exactly. so what it really does is it gives marketers you know, a seat at that table where they can talk about, well, we've generated X amount of revenue and leads, so we've generated this many leads and they're worth this amount of money. Our yep. sales team. Yeah. So it makes those conversations a lot more equal, and it gives the marketing team a lot more respect from their sales team. I think yep. that's a big thing that um having that service level agreement between marketing and sales that does. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Karen, you're going to speak at our event on the 13th of March. Um, um can you give um, let's say uh, to the audience who are considering coming and seeing you at the event. A uh, few good reasons why they should come. What kind of information are you going to share with us there? Uh, what are some of the main uh, uh, key areas you're going to focus on? Yeah, so I give you a couple. So one of the cool things I'm going to do is we're actually running a we're actually in, running a marketing campaign in, um, in co-marketing and with, with LinkedIn. So ourselves and LinkedIn are actually looking at the relationship between sales and marketing and pulling some information to figure out what sales marketers think about each other today 
Yeah. Um, and that's going to be some unique data to what's about on LinkedIn. And I'm going to, you know, bring that information with me within my presentation, share it to the audience so they can actually get a barometer and a benchmark of actually how marketing and sales teams um, feel about each other, how they're actually organized, how they feel each other are doing. Um, and then the other things I'm going to go through is really how, how HubSpot have done this, so how we've implemented the processes to make sure that marketing and sales have a really great understanding of who their customers are on both sides. I'll go through the exact dashboards we use. So how do we measure each other? How do we have a, we have something called a marketing dashboard yep. that both sales directors and marketing directors look at. So we measure ourselves by the same dashboard. So I'm going to bring the dashboard, the charts we use, and then also how do we actually create um, processes like that SLA agreement. Yep. So people can come out of the session and start implementing things straight away. Okay, great. That will actually so help them. So it's going to be create a, really create a better relationship between their sales marketing. Okay, cool. So that's going to be a very practical and hands-on and with the right uh, takeaways that marketers could take and implement in their own marketing the next day. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully there's, uh, for salespeople as well, they'll be, come out with a, you know, a, some clear action points that they can go back to the marketing team and say, well, why, why can't we do things a little bit like this so we can figure out you know, how we can get aligned around the right type of goals. Okay, Kiran. Thank you very much for your time, Kiran. And um, no, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put fear in you, but uh, since we have Mike Volpe two times as the best speaker on our <laughs> event, we, ex we, ex we, uh, we expect a lot of this uh, uh, presentation. So uh, looking forward to seeing you on the 13th of March. Yeah, that's cool. No, no pressure at all to follow Mike. <laughs>